What's up, Robert? Well, freaking Robert. What do you mean, dude? <laughs> huh? All right, how are you doing today? I'm uh, I'm doing. Look, how how is your mic on this so much better than your mic on Discord? Oh no, no, it's because I have my earbuds in. For the you gonna do that in the cause Discord in that meeting, dude? Cause I I could not understand like eighty percent of what you said. I think it's partly my internet, so just the Discord calls like cutting out. Oh, oh I see. And this is Zoom. Um, mm. But yeah, maybe also my earbuds. I don't know. Also, I'm not really sure if the audio is going to be okay, because last time I tried it, the audio was kind of janky. It, like, um, it, like peaked and dipped a lot. Well, hopefully it works. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's all we can hope for, you know? Mm -hmm. right. So, if you guys haven't already, if you want to follow along, uh make sure that you download the package from the unit from the discord channel i'll post the link in the chat just in case we are going to be making a gun system we're gonna wait a couple more minutes so just in case anybody's coming to this i'm pretty sure you can't copy paste from zoom chat oh really yeah Yeah, I don't know why they do it, but what the heck? Might be like that. Huh. You could uh, always post it in the uh, Discord Workshops channel, I guess. It's already like there. the Unity Classroom. Oh, okay. In in the events channel, at least. But like, this is just mm -hmm. in case. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got Ali. Yo, Ali, why aren't you a <laughs> why aren't you a UT student? What? Why aren't you a UT student? Can I call him out like that? <laughs> <laughs> I got I I had to admit you into the Zoom. Wait, I, I signed in. Maybe <laughs> signed in with my like UT <laughs> thing. Anyway, so like I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't know what's going on with it. Worse. You're really a second class citizen right here. <laughs> I mean, at least I can sign in. Like, Nathan just, like, dead. Oh, yeah. Sure. You have a seat on the council, but you don't have the rank of master. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Nah, but it's more like I, I retired from the council. Dude, Nathan just has to watch watch the, the Twitch stream, though. He can't make comments. Thanks for him. Unless he wants to message me over Discord while I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, efficiency. Oh, wait. Uh, I didn't want to. I want to open Hub, not Unity. No. Okay. Wow, cool desktop. Thanks, man. I drew it myself. Wow. All right. When are you going to do a workshop on how to draw that? Probably never, because they're much better artists 
in <laughs> to teach stuff. Okay, I say we'll give it like three more minutes and then we'll start. You guys done with classes? Isn't there still a week? Yes. Yeah, but like, for some of my classes, it's essentially done. Oh, really? Yeah, pretty much. I'm done with the classes. <laughs> Wait, okay, give me one second. Oh, yeah. I forgot that's it. <laughs> Last one, but I'm so ready to be done. I never want to touch systems ever again. Yeah, it makes sense. Which OS are you in? Norman. Ah. Uh, so, oh, yeah, I've had such a such a lit time yeah. with Gaius, dude. Yeah, no, Wait, is Gaius easier? No. It's individual. It's not easier, but I Norman has taught me that I don't really want to code with other people. Like in a uh, um, but I guys pulled up like the first day of registration last semester. It was crazy how quick it was. Dang. Yeah, dude, it used to be that used to be Norman, and then like yeah, we, we converted many people to guy after we. No, did. well, my one of my roommates is a CS major too, and he's a semester ahead of me, so he took OS in the fall with guy, and he like switched in from Norman, um, and then. It turns out that everybody liked Guy more, and so he told me to take Guy, and then everybody was like, "Oh, take Guy." Oh yeah. I was like, "Oh," <laughs> but it's just one more week. Got one more project. That's it. <laughs> yeah, because I'm gonna register for OS in a couple of days. Yeah, it's it's just a lot of work. It's like it's definitely yeah. what you hear about it is definitely true, but it's by no means like impossible it's just way different from like oh yeah it's, it's not impossible work. it's just like ultra grindy it's like ultra grind that's a good way to put it yeah Jeez. okay it's because it's it's a different kind of code <laughs> i don't think that, think that makes me feel better <laughs> i basically uh, you'll to, be like bad. stop doing anything oh okay yeah, no, it's... Well, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed my like 10 hour days in, days in the gdc or something i like think that. we're oh, gonna yeah. get started all right, so if you've been to the past workshops I've done, uh, you've seen this character, we've added animation to it, gave it particles. I took out the particles just for clarity. But now the next obvious step is to give it a gun. <laughs> so I have a really basic, okay. I need a, I need a. Well, first of all, if you're just importing this package, make sure that you, you um, update your layers. So you click on this, click on the slide bar thing in the corner, double click that. So it makes sure that you have a ground layer and that's going to be important for our player controller. The next thing that you're going to want to do is go into project settings. And wait, does this have a Okay. Um, okay. So we actually do need a bullet layer. That's weird. I don't see it here. Huh. Okay. Well, if you don't have a bullet layer, go into your tags and layers part. You can get to there from clicking on any one of these objects, going to layer, pushing add layer, and then typing in bullet. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to want to do is go into our project settings, uh, go to physics 2D, and we're going to want to make sure that bullets don't collide with bullets, and bullet doesn't collide with default. So bullet still will collide with the ground, but it won't collide with the player or other bullets. And lastly, 
if your bullet isn't already set to a layer bullet, you're going to want to set it to that layer. The end result should look something like this. So the bullet will still collide with the ground, but it won't collide with other bullets or the player. So if you have any, if you're having any trouble with that, just let me know. Uh, I'm I enabled multiple screen sharing, so you'll be able to show me if you what problems you're having. Okay, but if nobody has a problem with that, I'll give it like three seconds. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that nobody has a problem with that, um, and just move on. Okay, so right now what we have. This really, really basic gun, it's bad. It's honestly kind of bad. <laughs> if I wanted to uh, make a new kind of gun, I would have to, you know, go down to this gun prefab, change some of these values, change some of these values for this bullet if I wanted to make a different bullet, make another prefab. That sucks. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to use one gun and just put something in it to make all the values that I, all the relevant values I need change. And that's something that we're going to be exploring today. Um, we are going to be going over Unity's scriptable objects and uh, coroutines. So those are both meant to just make simple. Uh, simple actions like making a timer or making multiple different objects easier. Uh, and we're going to go over how to make them from scratch. Okay, so first of all, let's outline the goals that we want for our gun system. Uh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> very advanced technology. Uh, first of all, we want it to be easily expandable. Uh, so that means we want to be able to add a lot of different guns very easily. And the second thing that we want is we want it to be highly customizable. And that means we want to be able to make a wide variety of guns uh, with our system. So with these two goals in mind, let's go look at the included scripts that we'll be uh, building off of. So double click a script to open Visual Studio, right click and do what I just did with that open, open C Sharp project to open up your code base for your scripts. Okay, so we have three scripts. Uh, we have a player controller, which controls all that basic movement that you saw before. We're not going to mess with that today. Uh, we really just want to focus on these two. In fact, I'm just going to close it. All right, so first of all, let's look at the bullet controller. It's a very basic script. Uh, it has a couple parameters for speed, bounces, and uh, this determines how long it lasts. You saw you saw it earlier where it like bounces and goes off in one direction. That's because we just set its velocity to the speed, um, and this is this just makes it bounce. So we're not really going to worry about that. That's just the set behavior of the bullet that we want to have in mind. And when it runs out of bounces. The game object's destroyed when the time, uh, when the timer for how long the bullet stays around reaches zero, it's also destroyed. So that's just like the really really basic bullet that we're going to be working with. Uh, we are going to be adding something so that we can change these values, but that's going to come a little bit later. For the gun controller, it's also something really really basic. It's uh, right now, it's pretty much two functions. So it has the sprite render, and it will take in a bullet, 
uh, but not actually a scriptable object, just that's a, a bullet that it will shoot. Okay, so right now all the gun does is point at the cursor and instantiates a bullet when you click the left left mouse button. And that's not really customizable in any way. But I also don't want to add a bunch of different fields up here and change the numbers one by one for every single gun that I want to make. So instead, we are going to make something called a scriptable object. The way we do that is we make a new C sharp script. We'll call it bullet. We'll also be making one for gun. So do that too. Double click it. And what we're going to want to do is we will put in a field called create asset menu. Hey Alex, you seem to be getting like quiet. Uh, you have moments where you get really quiet. Oh really? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really know what's causing that. I think that was a problem before. I don't know if it's on Zoom. Oh, it's probably on Zoom. I don't really know how to fix it. Um, I think it might be fine now. I'm not sure, but we'll see. So far, so good. Okay. All right. So that's our first step. We're gonna wanna have to. Uh, we're gonna have, that have the menu name for bullet as gun. Whoops. So we're gonna have that field up here. We're gonna replace mono behavior with uh, scriptable object. So now it knows that this script is a scriptable object. And we're also going to delete the start and update functions. We're not going to be using those. OK, so what exactly is a scriptable object? A scriptable object is kind of like a data container for, um, it's kind of like a data contain container. But you can make different fields, like a float speed, a float called speed. Uh, you can also make a probably something that we want is bounces. So we'll make an int called bounces. And we also want a float for die time. And that's how long the bullet lasts. Okay. So this looks like a really boring script, obviously. But when we go back over to our Unity editor, uh, something we can do now is actually let's create a folder for scriptables. And we'll create a new scriptable object. So if you go to create, you'll see bullet. And now it's just created one of those bullet scripts that we were working on before. We'll call this one a basic. And for basic, we're just going to put in the val values that we had before for a gun, for a bullet here. Here. And now we have that in our scriptable object. So now we have a scriptable object that holds the values that we want for our bullet, bullet, but now we want it to actually be used for something. So let's now implement the this bullet scriptable object into our bullet controller. OK. So you see how we have all these fields from our previous bullet controller? We don't need them. We're not going to use them. 
we're going to replace it with a public uh, bullet, and we'll call it a bullet scriptable, something like that. And obviously, there are all these different fields that we had before, but now what we can do is we can put this in front of it because speed is a field of bullet scriptable. So we can just replace all the fields that are missing with that. And this is oh, and this is gonna make sure that now oh. What what would you just do? Um I deleted all of the the fields in bullet controller, except for the rigid body. Replaced it with bullet scriptable and made sure that all of the different variables I had before now have bullet scriptable in front of them. Uh, so that it's now pulling from the fields in the bullet scriptable instead of any local global variables inside bullet controller. So now it's pull pulling from these inside of here. Okay, this isn't working because we actually... It's because you have it named die time in your scriptable object. Right, yeah. Um, so we don't actually want to be changing a field here uh, of the scriptable object because something about scriptable objects is their values are uh, pretty much changeable wherever and also permanent. So if I changed its value in this code here, even after um, even after running the Unity editor and it decreasing that field, the next time I run the Unity editor, I will now have a different value in here. So that's not really what I want. So instead of doing that, I'm going to make a private variable float die timer, and in, and in start, I'm just going to make that equal to bullet scriptable die time. And my bad, we're not gonna actually put that there. Okay. So now we have a really, really basic implementation of a bullet scriptable object into our bullet controller. The basic idea is we replace all those fields that we had before with the a reference to our bullet scriptable and all of the fields inside of it. Okay, so let's go try that out. The first thing that we're gonna do is go into our prefabs, go to our bullet prefab, go to the bullet controller, and put our scriptable object in there. Okay. So it looks pretty much, oh, mm. oh, okay. I made a mistake. The same. Bound system to just be the same thing. Sorry, can you say that again? The bound system needs to be the same way. Right, yeah. So we're going to do the same thing that we did for bounces that we did. Or maybe I did it on purpose to show you what you shouldn't be doing and how, and how that might lead to a bug. Completely intentional. All right. I also want to show off something where you can change the values of the scriptable object even while the editor is in play. Did I do it again? Oh, I didn't change any of the references. Did you, did you instantiate a scriptable object at some point? I didn't see that happen. I was not paying attention. Uh, no, I just forgot to update the references. <laughs> okay, so you're going to want to make sure the bounce is here is actually the bounces you define. Uh, I think you missed another one. Yeah. In your if you're if, right? Like the one, line 44. 
Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, thank you. And now it should be working. Can I change this back because I'm dumb? All right. Okay, and now it's pretty much the same that we same thing that we had before. But now we can actually change these values while we're in editor. Let's move them a little faster. We can make it, I don't know, 100. I don't care. <laughs> uh, make it, like, bounce a lot more. And you can already see how this is a lot more useful than what we had before. You can change it very quickly. It's very easy. Uh, but that's not even... That's not even like half of its usefulness. So what you can do here is you can copy paste it. Oh, it's control D. Yeah, control D duplicates it. So I now have another scriptable object. I'll call this, um, I'll call this a sniper shot. Uh, obviously, if it's a sniper shot, oh, okay. I'm also gonna put down the bounces here that I changed before. If it's a sniper shot, we obviously want it to be a lot faster. So let's go something like sixteen, maybe even twenty-four. And remember, our bullet prefab still has the um, basic on it, so it's still gonna be slow. But something we can do is we can go to our prefab for the bullet, go to where we hold our scriptable object, drag in our new one, and all of a sudden, whoa, it's updated. And now we have a completely new set of um, values that we that we wanted to use. So, so obviously you see how this is a little bit more versatile easily expandable than what we had before. Okay, so we have our bullet. Now let's actually talk about our gun. So we're gonna go into our gun script. We're gonna do the same thing that we did before. Create asset menu. Do that. You name gun and oh I did it inside. Whoops. Okay. You're gonna want to do that outside the actual class. And change this to scriptable object. And delete those methods. Also if I'm going too fast, uh, please tell me. Hey, I don't really have a reference of how fast is too fast. <laughs> I think you are going a little bit too fast. Okay, sorry. I'll, I'll give you guys a second to catch up, just just to get to this point in the. Can you uh, can you explain the create asset menu part of the thing? Yeah. So this is what makes it so that you can right click, go to create, and then actually show, have that, here. So, menu name is just what it, just the name that it gives it for this. And the file name is the default name that it gives when you create one. So that's just, um, I guess you don't really need this. Uh, you pretty much just put this in so you can create a scriptable object from right click. Yeah. You can also create scriptable objects in like runtime without having it in the file system. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little less useful that way, though. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, you can just instantiate them. But uh, they work a little different, I guess. They're actually treated by Unity the same way oh. mono behaviors are treated by Unity. The only difference is they don't receive callbacks oh, from the okay. reflection. So they don't get, like, awake and stuff. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Well, you know what? 
I'm going to just, like, give anybody <laughs> who needs it a little bit to, like, catch up on something they may have missed. Uh, pretty much all of that we've altered right now is this gun, this bullet with these three fields, and the bullet controller, where we uh, add a reference to bullet, make these two uh, variables, and then replace uh, and then we replace the bullet speed references with references to the bullet script full speed. And we also put in these two lines. Okay, I am gonna keep going. Next thing that we wanna do is make our gun scriptable object. So, what are some fields that we might want to put in gun? I would say maybe like reload or, or gun cooldown. So, how about that? Um, I also want to do something where it's like number of bullets. So, public int num bullets. Um, if we want to make multiple bullets, that also means we want to control the angle that they're flying out of. Um, and that introduces some new questions. Do we want that angle to be uniform for every single bullet, or do we want it just to be in a range? So, we're going to do something like this. We're going to make a bool. Uh, we're going to call it uniform spread. Um... Uh, and we're also going to make a public float angle. So now we know how many bullets we want. We want we know if we want them to be all uniformly spread out, and we also know what angle that we want them to be at. And these are all um, fields that we are going to be inputting for each gun, but uh, if we want our behavior to be easily accessible, easily expandable, it should be that if we leave these these two fields as zero, it should just give us um, a normal behavior for the bullets. So that's really just like I don't know project design or or good coding design, uh, and that's something that you kind of have to learn just from experience. But we're gonna try to do that well today. So let's go into gun controller. With those new fields that we have, we can actually uh, start to make our gun look, feel, and behave much more like an actual gun. So first thing that we wanna do, yeah, public gun So a reference to our gun scriptable. Uh, for cooldown, we're going to be changing the cooldown to, you know, count time. So we're going to want to do the same thing that we did before, where we have a private float cooldown timer. And we're going to make that cooldown timer equal to gun scriptable. Oh wait, actually, no, we're not going to do that. Because what we're going to do is, whenever this cooldown timer is less than or equal to zero, uh, you're going to be able to shoot. But once you shoot, it'll set this cooldown timer to the cooldown in the bullet, uh, in the gun scriptable. Alright, so... Next thing that we want to do, number of bullets. We don't need a reference to that. We're not changing it. We're not changing those either. Okay. So first of all, I guess let's implement this cooldown. Okay, so what I was saying before, we want it to set the cooldown timer to the gun scriptable cooldown whenever you shoot. So we'll go down to shoot, 
uh, and make room for that. Okay, so now that cooldown's there, and we also want to make sure that you can't shoot if it's not less than or equal to zero. So we'll add an if statement if cooldown timer is less than or equal to zero. And shoot. Okay. Just want to make sure that everybody has time to do that. Okay, so put on zero, you can't shoot. Uh, if you shoot, it makes it that. Oh, and we also need to make it count down. So down timer minus equals time dot double time. Uh, that's incorrect. Sorry. Oh, really? uh, fixed update actually runs on a different clock, so you would have to do time dot fix delta time. You might oh. want to just put that in the update loop though. Yeah. I guess we don't really need this then. Okay, so let's just test how that worked. First of all, we're going to want to go to our prefab gun. Oh, wait, no, we're going to want to make a gun first. So go into your scriptables, right click, create gun. And we'll call this a basic. Oh, wait, no, that's very confusing. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> So we have all these fields. The only one that we've implemented right now is the cooldown. Let's say 0.5 for the cooldown. And we're going to want to drag that uh, scriptable object that we just made into our bullet controller here. Or no, gun controller. Gun controller here. So dragging this bullet object here. And then also this scriptable object here. All right, let's see how this goes. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes, but you know what, maybe I did. Okay, so I can't spam it as easily as before. So the cooldown's definitely higher, but I can also change it up here if I want to. Okay, so this seems like it's working. Oh, you know what? I also want to allow for uh, semi-automatic shooting. So right now, the shoot has get mouse button down. Uh, but I want to be able to also use input dot get mouse button. And that's all. So that, that just means if you're holding it down, it will always, it, it's a very subtle difference of, um, get mouse button down only activates the moment that you press down while get mouse button uh, does it whenever your mouse is down. Okay, so let's add functionality for that. Uh, let's add here. Public will automatic. And just pull that field from reference gun scriptable. So if automatic. Hey Ian. <laughs> I don't think you're what? muted. What? I don't think you're muted. That wasn't me. <laughs> oh really? Nope. Who is it? I hear it too. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure that you read it. If you did, <laughs> who, who, whoever needs it needs to know that. All right. Uh, we'll take the gun scriptable object, the automatic field. That's boolean, so we're just going to be putting it into if. And if it is automatic, then we want a sensor that has that doesn't have a down. 
and then we'll add an else statement and move what we had before in there. Okay, it also helps to comment just in case because this is gonna get a little uh, a little messy, especially if I if I forget to make my code hygienic. I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible, but just like it's a little difficult if you want to make it very very customizable. Okay, so uh, can you just leave it so? Just a recommendation, like if you write some code, once you're done writing the code, leave it there for a sec. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so Matthew, yes. Um, it would get a little complicated. Uh, but that's why you would kind of, it's kind of hard to describe. You, like, yeah, this might not be the best idea because it's making two different instances of shoot. So every time you want to maybe make some other reference to shoot, it would then have to be duplicated. Okay, you know what? Yeah, you're right. We'll make this a little more hygienic. Sorry about that. We'll <laughs> we'll change this. Um. Yeah, we're gonna change this. So that means. We're, we're going to make a bool called shooting, and we're going to make that equal to gunscriptbool.automatic, and we're going to use ternary input dot get mouse button. So if it is automatic, it will sense just get mouse button, and if it's not, it'll do get mouse button down. Okay, so now if shooting, shoot. Okay, so. So using this kind of stuff will get very spaghetti if you are not careful. Like already that, that was something that could have drastically uh, worsened the code's hygiene. So, so it does really help to be aware of it. But I honestly think that's manageable, manageable because even with a lot of different fields, if you keep them kind of separated, and if you keep your field separated, they shouldn't interact with each other that much. So it's almost just like, um, it's almost just like you can have a bunch of different methods um, with. Oh, uh, sorry, what? Uh, sorry, keep going. My bad. Uh, you can just have a bunch of different methods with uh, different functionalities for your bullet. Um, and you can arrange them in a way that makes a lot of sense. So Matthew, the the way I would recommend like keeping the, the systems for, from like becoming like a bunch of bool checks and spaghetti like functionality stuff, scriptable objects do support methods. Uh, so what most people will end up doing is will they end up having like a, 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 a um, uh, an inheritance hierarchy with different methods. So for like a bullet, you'd have an abstract bullet with an abstract method for shoot. And then you would keep track of your abstract bullet um, object. And whenever you wanted to shoot, you would call the abstract uh, bullets shoot method. And then you would have your implementation, your different types of bullets that had clear different functionality. 
as different children, and then you would have the parameters still be these little settings for tweaking. So, like all bullets will have bullet speeds so that can be part of the abstract bullet and can be tweaked. So the the runner system. Alex, is it just me or is he saying bullet? Bullet. I'm t yeah, it's a bullet, bro. Yeah, it, it's pronounced bullet. Bullet. It's a bull. It's a b u l l, dude. That's a bull. Oh man. <laughs> no, that's it's that's b o o l. <laughs> Yeah, true fault. No, 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 no. It's a bull. Yeah, yeah, it's a bull. No. It's a bull. <laughs> Dude, it, it reflects the actual method, uh, the functionality of a bullet. You either hit something or you don't. You know? I, well, <laughs> my bullet no, you always hit something. You always <laughs> something there. Like, you uh, either hit the player or you hit the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let Ian talk. There's a lot of things you can hit, actually. Let's let Ian, Ian talk. Yeah, yeah, anyway, you can you can you can put methods in scriptable objects. So this would prevent kind of like the long files you would be having if you Yeah, had, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Wait, right. Does it, does I just it, I can't inherit be a lot of guns too. Like you'd have to have like a special like abstract method for like handling input just in general. Cuz yeah. like, if you wanted to have a, a special a, a type of gun where you the shoot input like shoots a bullet, and then on the next shoot input it reloads, and then on the next input it shoots a bullet, and then the next input it reloads like that. Then you'd have to have something completely different. Well, generally, generally, the, the, there's to some degree you have to figure out what what is a bullet and what is uniform about a bullet, right? So, right. so here, here, like you would have to decide like, I want all bullets to have a uniform method of being shot, dependent on time, right? And then, you know, maybe you have your own shoot method for a bullet, but you know that they're going to be instantiated uh, by a gun uh, that that has a certain system for doing that. But I guess suppose all you really know is that a gun, like, is just a thing that spawns bullets, but you don't know, like, offhand, like, what input will spawn the bullet, like, where the bullet will spawn in relation to the gun. So, like, so maybe you want input linked to the gun instead of the bullet, right? I would, I would hope so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so then, then you can have those parameters. Like, you have to decide what is part of the system or not, right? Yeah. Honestly, that's design uh, catered for really, really big projects. And I kind of wanted to keep it to a one scriptable yeah. class and another scriptable class just for this one. Obviously, if you're going for a very uh, a very ambitious project design, you would want to do something a little bit more flexible. But for now, for our purposes, this is just what we're going to stick with. Wait, so how would you make it more modular so that you can use those bullets and guns for... So you wouldn't want to actually make uh, your shoot be defined, like what Ian was saying. Uh, you want to make sure that for your different scriptable objects, um, it uses different behaviors for this. Uh, I guess something you could do to kind of go about that is you could have a game... Sorry. Uh, you could have a enum in your gun. So maybe like... And say you wanted a couple of different classes of gun. So let's call one standard. Let's call another something like, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> okay, so maybe there's a class of gun where the user still has some input after they shoot the bullet. So we'll call that one input. Um, and another class of gun. What about for enemies? Could you use the same scriptable objects for enemies? Honestly, for enemies, if you wanted them to have the same kind of like really customized gun, you can kind of do the same thing. So that would probably fit into standard still. Or like. So here, like. I'm going to post some screenshots. Okay. I think you can also. Uh, screen. I can't. You can? Oh, yeah, I'll just share my screen. 
Yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, can y'all see me on my screen? I do not know. Yeah, we can. All right. So here, what I can do is create an abstract bullet class instead of a bullet, right? This is what I mean. And the shoot is defined here, right? So whenever I instantiate a bullet controller, I can give it the callback to shoot uh, to the bullet itself. So the bullet can define what I want. So here, then I can say like, okay, actually I want my bullet to move, right? With the controller dot, uh, or like the bullet speed or whatever. Like here I can move the bullet controller, is it? the the actual shoot for the bullet controller, I can move to the bullet, right? Oops. Oh, uh, yeah. If that makes that sense. Let me see. Uh, where is it? Where does it instantiate the bullet? It should be in gun control. Oh, wait, wait yeah, yeah, the gun controller instantiates it. Yeah. Where do you move the bullet? Uh, that should all that will also be in gun controller. Oh, the gun controller moves the bullet. Yeah. Because when you want um a spread of bullets, you're gonna wanna be able to change all of them in the gun. Where does it move the bullet? Uh, shoot. That, that makes the bullet. Yeah. Wait. What I mean is, like, move it, the update. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Right that's here, that's right a here, bullet, right yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's in, it's in start. Bullets have rigid bodies. It's right and here. I just yeah, it's set right the here. velocity. This is what I want. So instead of doing this, I can do bullet dot shoot. And then pass it in itself. And then I can pass this stuff and move it over here. Oh. Uh, where's my bullet? Like this. Wait, that's not. Uh, Shoot. And actually, what you would use here is a coroutine, and I'm gonna let Alex go ahead and tell you what. Right. That is. <laughs> this is what you would do here instead of having a die timer associated with the uh, the bullet controller. You would just have a coroutine run it here right i honestly kind of forgot that <laughs> about core routines. all right so kind of going off of what ian said yeah i'm gonna show you guys how to use coroutines now um coroutines are kind of uh the kind of ways to delay a method it's kind of like a method that you can't delay so Let's make, first of all, an I enumerable, I enumerator. Nah, it's that. And we'll call it die. And this is for a bullet that we want to destroy. So we'll also make it input or, or take in a And the main thing that you're going to be doing in, uh, in enumerables is yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And we're going to use that delay. So that pretty much just means that this will take this amount of time before it does anything here. We'll pass that yield. OK, so. What do we want to happen when it gets past that yield? We want to destroy the scan object. OK. So now instead of having to count down this timer with a float, we can delete that, actually. Delete that here. We can just start protein. We would use die, and then we would input bullets with rule dot die time. Oh, wait, what? Uh, is 
the numerator. Okay, yeah. The numerator <laughs> for die. So now, once we start this, oh, and we also don't want to do it in fixed update. We want to do that in start. Okay, so as soon as this bullet is created, a core routine for the die time is started. And it will destroy itself after this amount of time, the die time, no matter what. So it's pretty much the same functionality as we had before, but a lot, lot cleaner. We can also do that, something like that for our gun. I'm a little lazy and we still have a lot of stuff to cover, so I'm gonna skip over that for now. All right, so let's talk about that uh, num bullets and uniform spread angle thing that we had before. Oh wait, actually, we never actually tested the automatic stuff. Let's do that first. Yeah. Uh, okay. Alright, so this, autom this gun still isn't automatic. And now it is. And this meshes a lot well with lower cooldowns. Okay. So our automatic works. Now let's go on and implement that spread. We're just going to do that in inside shoot. It's definitely not optimal, but <laughs> for what we're doing right now, it's just what we have to go with. So we're going to actually make a reference to the bullet that we instantiate. We'll call it uh, bullet instance. instance. We're also going to want to make a for loop. And we're going to make it go from 0 to gunsquickable dot num bullets. So it will make, it will instantiate num bullets amount of bullets. All right. Uh, so it now makes that amount of bullets. We want it to now rotate. Let's do something like this. Um, we have a rotate function. And let's cover the case where it's not a uniform spread first. So first of all, we want... Well, if we're rotating a bullet, we're rotating the z-axis. Uh, so it would be 0, 0, and then a z number. And let's make that into a variable. So float z rotation. And put that in there. If it's just a non uniform spread, we probably just want a random float from within that. So we'll do something like random dot range. Nope, that's not it. Uh, and we'll go from gun 
times squared for the angle divided by two. We actually want to make this negative. And gun squared for divided by two. So the total range of angles that a bullet can now be is equal to gun squared rule. And it will rotate each one based on that. All right, let's just test out that case. So let's say we want 10 bullets from every single shot. <laughs> uh, and we want our angle to be in between. Okay, now we have, I don't know, a really weird shotgun. Definitely not as pretty as most shotguns would be, but it's a really basic implementation of that. Okay, now let's cover the case where it's uniformly spread. All right, so if gun script again, then if it does have a uniform spread, then we want First of all, we're going to move this reference to C rotation above that. We're going to move the calculation for it inside each of these. And if it is uniformly spread, we want to, first of all, since I have an I here, we can Find, we can divide the total angle by the number of bullets there are and then spread out each bullet according to that. And I don't really want to figure out <laughs> what that is. I just have it here. And that should be exactly what we're looking for. Take a moment, write that down. And now our, what is it? Now our uniform and non-uniform cases should be working. All right. Does anybody still need to look at this code? I'm going to give it like five seconds. And OK, let's go. Now let's say we want a uniform spread. Uh, let's put it down to three. And that looks uniform. That's another case. All right, so I think you guys kind of get the idea by now. You can keep on adding fields. You can kind of keep on adding functionality. Uh, you can keep on getting more and more uh, varied and customizable guns. That's kind of what our goal was, and I think that's what we achieved. Um, I think just now, uh, since I've covered most of the stuff that I want to go over, I'll open it up to suggestions for what kind of gun fields that we can add and what kind of guns we might want to make. So any suggestions on a specific kind of gun we want to implement? I guess it's not really... Uh, doesn't factor for functionality, but I guess since it's for like customizability, we could add like 
color field or something. Mm, like, right. The springs. Right. I actually really want to see knockback if I can say something. Oh, okay. Uh, so sprite change and knockback. Those are both fairly easy to, uh, fairly easy to implement. I'm pretty sure for knockback, we're going to have to add something. For knockback, since we want it to be, the force to be between a point from here and the player, so that the force is this way. Uh, so like wherever you're pointing your gun, the force would be that way, opposite. Um, we can probably just take the direction that the gun is pointing. Um, and then multiply that by a vector. So let's do that. So first of all, in our gun, let's add a couple fields to make our knockback a little customizable itself. So public float knockback, uh, knockback power. And we'll go into our gun controller. And Okay, so this is a little weird with how it interacts with the player, since we want to apply a force to the player, but we would be doing the calculation in the gun. So, to kind of reduce the amount of kind of interscript finagling that we would have to do, let's just make a... Let's just make a private, no, we want it to be public. A public void apply knockback in the- We just apply force. Right. I mean, okay. Uh, it doesn't matter, I'm just- yeah. And it will take in a vector three. Pretty much all of we be, would be doing is getting the rigid body at force and be yeah, nice. And honestly, that might seem kind of pointless, but as soon as we start, we would start to be adding complexity to our knockback system. If like, even if we wanted to um, add just like one or two more things that it has to do. It's a lot cleaner to be putting a method here rather than inside of our gun, because that just doesn't make sense, right? Or why, why, are, why would our gun be controlling how our player's moving? Okay, so... Oh, we also need a reference to the player controller. Um, let's do that and start. Since we know that the gun is always childed to the player, we can just do uh, transform.parent and then get component. Uh, player control. There's a, I don't know if you know, there's a git component in parent. Oh, really? As well. Yeah. Right. And that'll recursively search parents just in case you like add layers in between. Oh wow. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. Didn't know about that. Yeah. All right. Get component in play uh, in parent. Get the player controller and then we would be calling the apply force in truth. And this would be Okay, 
So I think what this would be is transform dot rotation times should be vector two dot right, I think. You might want to make sure that's uniform. I, it's probably actually you're probably that's probably fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You could you can normalize before that, but it doesn't matter. I think I think that's normalized. It should be. The vector right. Because vector dot right is normal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this should be. It's either right or up. I'm not sure which one. It's whatever the default. Uh. Actually, it might be up here, right? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm just yeah, let's just see. It's actually up, yeah. Oh. I think I think that's the default of your. Well, story. let's see how this <laughs> turns out anyway. All right. Oh, it didn't do it. Okay. That's your knockback force zero. No, I. Oh wait, no. Um. Let's just try it up there. It seems like that might just be pushing me down. That's why I'm doing it. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little weird. You're using rigid bodies for player control. Yep. Yeah, that should be good. Maybe it has the wrong gun. Nope. Basic gun. Run it. Right. Weird, weird, weird. All right. I think it needs to be higher. Oh, yeah. It just needed to be higher. Oh, it should be. It should be actually negative, backwards, yeah. right? It should be negative. All right. Yeah. Um. Just negate uh, up, or just do dot down. Yeah, do dot down. Uh, just vector two dot down. down. So I'm just making it negative. Whoops. Okay. Um, I think something that will make it so that we don't have to make these massive numbers is force mode 2D dot impulse. So that would give us a little bit better, better to input fields. Hey, okay. Now we got knockback. And let's say that our See that full auto with knockback? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I actually have a gun in one of my games that you don't... Oh, I guess I'm just gone. Huh, okay. I have a gun in one of my games that that's, like uses the system. Uh, <laughs> where, where, where you can kind of just like fly around with it from the not recoil. Yeah. yeah. You, you might want to be careful if you do the, if, you're, if you're like trying to be a good game designer and be like. <laughs> yeah, you definitely uh, want to input. Yeah. Maximize the Y component of the knock bike by the gravity scale might be something you could do if you <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> That's less fun, honestly. Like, yeah. It should actually be like, you could do some math to figure out like the gravity scale since. Like yeah, you could definitely put it in chance. Shoot you up. You but yeah. <laughs> or just the cooldowns and the yeah. match effects are. But yeah, now we have um now we have that. Okay. Uh something Ali oh, earlier was having a specific sprite for a gun. Let's put that in real quick. That should be fairly easy to implement. So we add a public sprite field to our gun. Um, we go into our gun controller. We go to start. Actually, no. Okay. Yes. It's definitely not something that you would be wanting to do, be doing in your actual project. Uh, but just the way that I have it set up, it won't show the sprite changing unless I put it in update. So let's just make 
freight ride. Dot sprite. Wait, why? <laughs> because it only actually sets these values in start. So if I'm dragging in a new gun scriptable, it's not going to update it. Well, why would you put a new gun scriptable in after update? Well, that's just start. that's just how I'm showing it right now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's definitely not what you want to be doing in your actual project, of course. But that... if you do it at runtime, like dynamically, you might want to have a listener for whenever the the gun changes. Right. Yeah. Like an action. But we don't. So. Yeah. So that's fine. Just keep that in mind whenever you're making it. Now let's put in a shotgun. We want to. Hey, let's go. Uh, shotgun. Ooh, thick boy. Yeah, thick boy. <laughs> Same exact uh, specs. That. So, no, it <laughs> doesn't really do anything. All right. Going into gun, and we'll drag the new one in. Oh, whoa. Now it's a different sprite. C -c Crazy. Yeah, so again, with the customizable thing, that's one of the ways you would be able to customize your guns. What if you uh, change the bullet sprite to a platform? <laughs> <laughs> the land gun. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> uh, let's go to the bullet. So we'll do the same thing. Except we don't actually have to put the sprite update in uh, in update for this one. So uh, yeah. Oh my god, this is so annoying. Having to, oh my god. All right, all right, Robert, you insane bastard. Uh, and now let's make it actually update the bullets sprite. I was planning on doing originally was making a bullet field inside of the, the gun scriptable so that it can automatic so like every gun has its own kind of bullet oh well. okay no some no that's something you can do <laughs> if uh, you wanted each of your guns to have a very specific type of bullet that's associated with it yeah, I'm sorry about that. That, that would have been cool to show off, but I forgot to set it up that way. Oh, well. All right, so we're going to make this prefabs bullet. And we're going to make the scriptable object for it. Oh. Oh, OK. It already has it. All right, Robert, you asked for this. The land gun. Ooh. Ooh, oh, so beautiful, honestly. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, now, now give him a hitbox and make it push back an opposing player. <laughs> no, that's something that we... The Project Settings Physics 2D. Uh, you give it an animation. <laughs> this is going to be brutalizing. I would actually have to draw. It, can you make it shatter on colliding with the, another platform? Well, then I would just make the bounces one, so it doesn't bounce at all. 
No, no, but I, I need the, I need the physics space, the destruction. Oh God! Like cut up the mesh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't know how to do that. Okay. But that's pretty much all I have to show. If you still want to do some suggestions, I'm, I'm down for that. But honestly, I don't have anything new to show. Okay, what if you made it shoot a gun that also shot bullets? Oh, the gun yeah. the gun, gun. The, the gun shoots a gun, and then the shotgun shoots bullets <laughs> when it bounces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. And you uh, can choose what <laughs> gun you want it to shoot. And oh, which bullet the gun... Jesus. Yeah, you, you scroll to choose which gun. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I know how to do that. Well, you have a list of gun objects, right? Right. And then you just you just shoot the gun. No. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you instantiate guns. Hmm. Not sure about that one. Right, what if when you shoot the platform and it hits another platform, it spawns the new platform, so you you edit the map by shooting it? Okay, that is actually something I know how to do. Uh. <laughs> Oh god, that would also be really messy though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Alright. So the way I would go about that is I would go to my bullet scriptable object. I would put in a game object called death object. And whenever I... Whenever I die here, oh wait, actually, I want to replace this with a uh, start protein die. Oh, whoops, okay. And with a delay of zero, because if, in this- If you do that, mm -hmm. would you have to stop the one that's currently going? I don't think so. I think multiple quarantines can be in action at once. Then, like, if you destroy it uh, with this, like, non-delay one, and then the other one's still running, and then tries to destroy it, there's nothing there, right? Yeah. And I don't think it actually does anything, if that's the case. You know what? We can test it out, so. Um, yields... And then what we also do is instantiate the def object. So okay. And let's say what we want. Let's say we want a platform to be spawned. Oh, okay. Actually, something I'm gonna I'm gonna make a quick change to this. If um, gun script bullet scriptable dot def object, if that is not equal to null, then it instantiates it. Objects. This one. And this one. <laughs> okay, Robert. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm also gonna. Oh, I already did. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Alright, let's see if this works. Whoa! <laughs> Okay, hey. that definitely worked. <laughs> Looks pretty cool, actually. Oh, Jesus. Nice new movement type. Okay, honestly, this would be a really cool concept for a game. Ooh. Yeah, maybe maybe it's if, if the platforms you shot were like tiny versions of the movie, like... Or, or somehow more controllable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like if it hit the ground, it would align itself, and then uh, 
I mean, we can honestly change the gun and make it a little bit more, um, make it a little bit more control. Yeah. So like well, maybe just it. one, maybe not automatic, <laughs> and no angle. But we still do want high knockback because you don't shoot a platform and just come out it, come out the other side. What if your What if your muscles oh, are really strong? And I mean, you just dampen yeah. the knockback. Where's it going, bro? Oh, there we oh. go. <laughs> there it is. Okay. <laughs> you need you need the knockback to hook you up. Yeah. Okay. Um. We don't want. We want it to do it on the first bounce. Yep. All right. Oh, I'm flying. <laughs> See, that's why you can't have that knockback. You gotta make the platforms matter. <laughs> you're right, you're right. But, you know, like, what if you can do that and have knockback? <laughs> Be busted. I, I'm just gonna increase the cooldown, huh? You're just the gravity stronger, yeah. So now I can't shoot as often. But now I'm gonna be able to do use both. Okay, this is definitely derailed a lot. <laughs> I think I'm gonna call the workshop there. Uh... Yeah. We've utilized scriptable objects to create a very customizable gun in <laughs> in very strange ways. As you, as you see here, it can it's very uh, expandable, customizable. Uh, but honestly, like a little difficult to use if you don't have good code hygiene. So you want to make sure that you have a good baseline in that. But if you do, it's a really powerful tool. And we also learned how the, the bare, bare basics of how to do coroutines. Just to cut down on the amount of... <laughs> I just took a look at the character. <laughs> All right. just, just to cut down on the amount of variables that you'll need to use and the amount of code that you'll need. Uh, all in all, this should make it so that you don't have to worry as much prefab stuff for uh, prefab stuff for like mass changing of of your assets which is a really good shortcut for uh, projects with a lot of assets all of all of the same kind okay so that's all I have to say Uh, nice. nice having guys. Thanks for coming. Noise. <laughs> Noise. Noise. All right. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. See ya. See ya.